in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're continuing with the new era, uh, part two. And we're on the second paragraph of volume 12, May 22nd, 1919. And Jesus says, this is why I am. He uses God's name. I am preparing the era of living in my divine will. This new era, everything that's happening in the world, Jesus is saying, I have to see what people want. I have to give to people what they want. Okay, so he's giving to us the divine will. Do we want the divine will? And if we want the divine will, he says, I, you are being prepared to live this abundant life. He says very, very clearly, for all that souls have done, have not done in the past generations, and the souls that will not do what God has planned, in this new era of my divine will, those souls will complete the divine love, the divine glory, the divine honor of the whole of creation. What does that mean? We're going to be in that perennial communion with God as Adam was in the perennial communion with God. Everything's going to be completed. Everything's going to be the way God planned from the beginning. So what's coming is the new era. It's a new beginning for, for all of mankind. It's, a, it's really, a, uh, our, our Lord is asking us to let go of the worry, the fear, the anxiety, the complaints, the negativity, the sin. To let go of this fallen life, even though Jesus has redeemed us, our lady co-redeemed with Christ. Even though they have given Louisa this gift of the divine will, Jesus says, uh, this new era, everything will be completed. Okay, the angels don't know what that's like. Why? It was, it was given to Adam, and Eve fell immediately, and then Adam fell. The, the, the secrets, the, the mystery, the, the beauty of what's coming, the angels don't even know about. And they are waiting. Uh, remember, Galatians says, all creation groans for the revelation of the sons of God. That that's to live in the divine will. The, all of creation is groaning to go to that life that God originally breathed into, into Adam. To be sons and true sons and daughters of God. Jesus says, everything's going to be repaired. It's going to look, this is what he tells Louisa, as if Adam did not sin. That's the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful Catholics. In Kindle, why? Because we have the fullness of the, of the truth. We have, we have the, the sacraments, the sacramentals. We have the Blessed Mother. And, and now Jesus has given us the Book of Heaven. And we have the Holy Father, the one who will be working with Louisa to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus, Jesus says, those that have, they have, the souls have not done, the souls that they will not do this in this new era of the divine will. He says they will give God complete, complete, complete love, complete glory, complete honor. Of the whole creation. And Jesus says, and I, God, will give these souls such astonishing, astonishing and unheard of graces. That's what's coming. Astonishing and unheard of graces. Like I said, the saints, the angels don't even know what's coming. They got a glimpse of it. But Jesus says, this surprise of love to God's children will astonish the world. This supply, supply, the surprise of love is what God wants to give to us. So he says, uh, this, this astonishing and unheard of graces are going to be common. That's why I keep on telling the miracles that are going to come through Louisa will astonish the world. It's not just one or two miracles that the church requires for it to become a saint. Uh, Father Bucci told us that the church 
will recognize Luisa as Luisa la Santa, Luisa, the saint of the church. We're going to see things that will, will completely uh, uh, renew uh, our lives when we see, when we hear, when we smell, when we taste what God is going to do in creation and redemption and in sanctification. And he says to Luisa, this is why I, God, am calling you. I am, he uses the name. This is why I am calling you, Luisa, to live in my divine will. And now what Jesus is saying to us is the same thing. I'm calling you, one with Luisa, to live in the divine will. This is God's call. This is not just our hope. This is not just our uh, uh, desire to, to be one with Christ Jesus has predestined us to live at this time so that we can listen to his call, listen to his voice, so that he can instruct us, as he says, to and console us for uh, this, this era that we're living in. It's the new era that's coming. We have to have such confidence in what Jesus is saying that nothing bothers us. Everything's fiat. See, if we learn to say fiat in all situations, we, we enter happiness. This, this is what Our Lady teaches us. Fiat mihi, let it be done as you wish, as you say. You know, that, that's, if we live this fiat, everything, everything is great. So Jesus says, and I whisper into your ear. So here, now, Jesus, see, this is, this is found in the echo book. These are the, this is a prayer that Jesus taught Louisa. This is what's so great. I whisper into your ear the prayer. I, Jesus, want to hear you pray. Okay. This isn't the prayers of the saints, which we have learned for the last 2,000 years. This is Jesus and Mary teaching us how to pray the pray they want to hear. And what is it? Jesus, I lay at your feet all the adoration, all the subjection of the whole human family. See, we represent all mankind. We bring before God uh, uh, everyone and everything that's living in the divine will. We, we present to you, Lord, all the, all the I love yous. I lay at your feet the adoration, the subjection of every human being, past, present, and future. I take their place and I say to you, Lord, uh, now this is what Jesus wants to hear. This is the prayer Jesus is teaching Louisa and now teaching us. I place in your sacred heart the I love you of every human being, not only my family, not only my friends, not only my neighbors, but every human being. He says, um, I place on your heart the I love you of everyone. On your lips, I impress my kiss in order to seal the kiss of all human generations. Every human being that ever lived. I want to kiss you, Lord, for them. Think about what that means. Everyone, you see, you represent all mankind. Everyone is now kissing you, Jesus. When you, when you venerate the cross, when you kiss the cross, Jesus says, I will accept it as you actually kissing me. How do we do this? How do we kiss Jesus? If you have a cross, venerate the cross. Kiss the cross. And what happens, Jesus says, I accept you kissing me as if you're actually kissing me. So he says, I, 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 in your lips, I impress my kiss in order to seal the kiss of all mankind. I clasp you in my arms in order to clasp you with the arms of everyone. That's why I said, get a large baby uh, 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 of the nativity, not just a little baby that you put in a crib, but a real live, not alive, a real life-size baby and kiss it, hug it. Jesus says, this is what he's longing for. This is the prayer. This is not um, a pious thought. He says, he, this is what he says. Uh, uh, I clasp you in my arms in order to clasp you with the arms of every human being. To bring to you, God, all the glory of all the works of all mankind. 
Do, do you see why everything's being repaired? See, it's the, rep, rep, the repair that God is looking for, to repair and redo. This is the main thing that Jesus teaches us in the divine will. To repair and redo in the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. Repair and redo. He, this is what Jesus wants. He says, <clears throat> I want you to uh, take the place of every human being. To be that I love you of every human being. To be that kiss of every human being. To be that hug of every human being. See, this is repairing the face of the earth. This is going to uh, 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 prove to the evil one that all his lies, all his deceits, all his deceptions were useless. God is going to win. How's he going to win? Through humanity, who begins to live in this new era now before we die. So Jesus says, and I, God, feel in you, Louisa, the adorations, the I love you, the kiss of the whole human family. Everything's being repaired. Everything's being redone. If you, if you are not living alone with Jesus, if you, if you don't understand that the ring that you wear is, is symbolic of the, the mystical marriage, symbolic of the wedding feast of heaven, if we, if we don't have that intimacy with God, being the little child of God, God being our father. And then the thing reverses. Then we become the mother and Jesus becomes the child. It's, it's to begin to live this abundant life. Uh, it's, it's the love of a father to the daughter, from a daughter to the father, from, from the mother to the son. This, this is what's so extra, extraordinary about this gift. Your whole spiritual life changes. God isn't a thousand miles away. He's right with you, with, in, through, and for you. And Jesus says to Louisa that the saints were to know, love, and serve God. But in the divine will, we, become to, we come to know, love, and possess God. But it's a mutual possession. God possessing us and we possessing God. This is, this is the marriage feast. This is the wedding feast of heaven, which Jesus says he wants to begin now. He says, that I rose from the dead so that you can rise from the death of the human misery to begin to live this abundant life of peace, joy, and happiness. So he says, he says, so it once you become uh, the adoration, the I love you, the kiss of the whole human family, how could I, God, not give to you the love, the kisses, the graces, which I should give to all the others. So what Jesus is saying, in the divine will, it's multiplied infinitely almost. Why? He, he says, what you give to me in the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, the thousand people in your town. He says, I give back to you the, the I love you that I would give to all of them. So what happens is we begin to live this abundant life. We begin to live this life of peace, joy, and happiness. We begin to live a life that it's the true life of Jesus and the true life of Mary that's found in Louisa. That's what God is offering to us. That's what God is asking of us. Are you, do you want to begin to live heaven on earth? And if we say, yes, God goes, good. I'll teach you how this is going to happen and why this is going to happen. So we'll end with a prayer. May the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, that all the little children of the holy divine will become divinely healed. And we pray that this prayer becomes God's command in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you, and we'll talk to you later.